Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker. Today we're out for a walk on the beach. Now we have a very, very cool looking shark. <laughs> oh, it's Jim! <laughs> oh, it's, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a winter morning. I'm out for a walk on the beach. And the area of beach, what we're at at the moment is, I've got the sun right behind me over there. So when I spin you around, you're not gonna be able to see too much. The area here at the back of me, down towards there is Penzance, Newlin. Around the corner you go towards where Land's End is eventually. The area of sea that we're looking into is Mount Bay. And that in particular there, that's where we're hoping to go in a minute. That's St. Michael's Mount. Now, St. Michael's Mount is an island in Mount Bay. You can only get to it at certain times of tide. Right. The tide is ebbing off, which means it's going out. We'll have a little walk along the low tide line and hopefully by the time we get down there, the tide will have gone out enough that we can get across. Are we ready to go? Yeah! Let's get going. Walking down the sand flats, we have had a little bit of rough weather. So you can see it has turned up quite a bit of kelp. We have some patches of dulse and some kelps. That there, yeah, see that? That's a worm colony. See all the holes? Walking along areas of shore like this, sand flats, you will find worms. And here, you can see, is a worm cast. These are lugworm. When it's like a disorganised patch, like that, or like that, where it's just kind of all everywhere, it's blow lug. When it's a perfect round, like a perfect round, like a, a Danish pastry, like that, that's a black lug. So black lug goes around, and blow lug is just a squiggle. Right, in these types of seaweed here, what have we got? This one? Sea lettuce. Sea lettuce, well done, yes it is. And this one is called dulse. And this one, do you know what this one's called? That looks like a real big lumpy tongue. You know what this is called? Sugar kelp. Sugar kelp? Yep. Here's another one, look, here's a little one. Does it? Yeah. All right. We'll see what else we can find. Yeah. As with some of our other coastal exploring videos, we uh, we have a base knowledge because it's our local area. But we've done a little bit of research about certain areas to be able to try and give you a little bit more information. And uh, <laughs> this is no exception. Absolutely fascinating. The, uh, the island, the island's obviously been there a long time, it's, it's well, part of the earth. But uh, some, of the, some of the information is in dispute about the certain dates. But one thing is certain, and that's that um, it was used as a trading post as far back as the Iron Ages. There was uh, mention of an island, Ictus, by a Greek historian in the first century BC. So this was, this was used as a trading post with the Greeks for tin and copper. Some of our other videos, we've, we've covered the tin and copper mines around the, the Cornish coast. But a hundred years before Christ, that was used as a trading post. There's a, there's a few other really interesting things. Some of, them, some of them are fact, like I said, some are disputed. And some have even descended kind of into folklore. There is... Um, there's a story that you were going to tell, weren't you? Yeah. So apparently the island, the mount, was built by a giant called Cormoran. And he lived over there and he used to step ashore to come and snatch cattle and sheep out of the fields in Marazion. 
So obviously all the locals were terrorised by him losing their livestock. So a young boy called Jack, one night, rode from the mainland over to the mount, managed to sneak ashore while the giant slept. And on the north side slope, he began to dig a giant pit. It took him all the way until morning. He completed this massive, massive deep pit. He sounded his horn as loud as he could while the sun was coming up to wake the giant. The giant woke startled, came running down the slope, dazzled by the sun in his eyes like mine is now, didn't see the pit, didn't see J Jack and fell into the pit. Obviously the locals revered Jack and he got the name Jack the Giant Killer and there is a well over there that hopefully we'll get to see today. It's grated over and apparently that's the pit where the giant is. So we go. Story wonderfully told. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently it was also used in the tale of, I'm never sure how to pronounce it, um, Tristan and is he, how did you say it? Is Isolde. Isolde or Isolde. Um, this used to be where the hermit origin was sent to collect fine linen and cloth for Queen Isolde's clothes. There you go. And I don't know if you can see it yet, but this is it here. The causeway is just opening up as the tide's ebbing off. So we're going to cut across these rocks here by these oyster catchers and then walk down the causeway. Come on then, you lead the way. Here we are, we're walking along the causeway now as you can see. We are pretty much bang on half tide. It was it was high tide this morning about half past nine, when it's gonna be low tide about half past three, four o'clock. It is half past one now. Anna was just saying there, she says, oh, what happens if you're on the island and the tide comes in? And you're stuck. <laughs> That's it. That's part of it. But, like, because you were just, I, when you think about the tide going in and the tide going out, I just assume that it goes out and then comes in. But, like, there's still water either side of us, yeah. but the pathway's clear. But you said the tidal run is, is it east to west here? Yeah, the tide. The tide when it runs, it floods, it'll go in a direction. It doesn't come in and out, it runs that way and that way. So the um, it'll be high tide in Penzance at a different time, it'll be high tide in Falmouth. You never stop looking, dear. What have we got here? Some mackerel feathers. What's the bet that there's a sinker on the end of that? No, oh, no, just a load of hooks. Put it on my bag. Put it in the bin on the way back. The tide's coming. I think we need to tie something in. This is an interesting rock here, isn't it, James? Yeah. What do you think it's for? For mermaids, is it? Yeah. All right. Hmm. It's under the table. This is a very unusual one, isn't it? Yeah. Mum, where is this? What is it? I don't know. It's a table one. It was for mermaids. The mermaids are missing now. Hmm. That's a mermaid table. Oh no. This isn't looking good. Well, there it is up there. A nice little spot, isn't it? Yeah. Unfortunately, closed. Yeah. <laughs> and, according to the sign there, is they won't even let us walk around the island on the shore. I suppose they've got to, haven't they? They don't want tourists walking around and getting stuck on the back side of the island when the tide comes in. They end up being stuck on the island all night. We'll just come back in the summer when it's open. Yeah. Yeah. Please. 
fairies in the school that beat home. You can yep. find the giant's hole, don't you? Yeah. Just, yeah just Robert, carry on walking along here and then we're going to have a walk along the beach. Which way should we go? Should we go that way? Should we go left or should we go right? I think right. I think we'll go right and have a look at that little harbour. No, left. <laughs> left. Okay. Right. Left. Well, that was a little bit disappointing. We were hoping to be able to show you a little bit more of the island. That unfortunately is as close as you're going to get closed up for winter and with everything else that's going on hopefully what we'll do is we'll just come back in the summer if we've been able to take you on and show you around a little bit more some of the other interesting facts that I was going to tell you about was um, this is one where there's a little bit of uncertainty that's generally because as with most things in England's history there was at times there was quite a lot of conflict Histories were rewritten, some were forgotten, some were erased, some were amended. It was said that the earliest recorded building, like actual, there is proof that it was there, was a chapel was built in 1044 by Edward the Confessor. Or, <laughs> there's always an or, or it was in 1066. And that was by William the Conqueror. That was uh, around about the time of the Battle of the Hastings with the Norman, the, uh, the Norman Conquest. And he gifted most of, a lot of the South West to Robert, Count of Mortain. And that was when. So it was either 1044 or 1066. Either way around. That's over a thousand years ago. Pretty impressive. Another point in England's history when that mount played a part was during the 12th century, during the time of Richard I and the Crusades in the Holy Lands at the time of Robin Hood and uh, the mount was actually seized and held as a fortress by a group of King John's allies it was it was later handed back to the monasterial use but yeah, there's another point in it the time of Robin Hood that was seized by some King John's allies against Richard the Lionheart several more times in history the mount was coming to use for fortresses during times of conflict. The time of the uh, War of the Roses, of the Cornish Rebellion against Edward VI. And again, I think it was during the English Civil War, which is the 1640s. It's easy to see how it can be held, doesn't it? But then again, once you're on it, you're stuck on it, aren't you? You alright there, Mr. Shark? Where are we going now? We're going to have a look at this harbour. We're going to have a look at this little white castle over here. Or, why don't we have a look in these rocks here and see if we can find some crabs. I do like the sound of bladder rack underneath your feet. It's just like bubble wrap, isn't it? What are we going to find over here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> careful, careful, no, wow. careful you don't slip. Right, where do we find the crabs? Under the rocks. Okay, you look under your own rocks over there and I'll have a look over here. Just lots of limpets. And baby flat swim. winkles. I see a baby shrimp. You found a baby shrimp? Yes. Where is he? It's right there. Oh, yeah, a little sun flea. Good find. You're going to come down here and help me turn these big rocks over? You're going to find your own big rocks, okay. You'll be careful. That'll show you there. The yellow one is a flat periwinkle. The other one is a normal winkle.
there are a lot of limpets around here. For the viewers watching in the Pacific Islands, they call these opihi, and they are a delicacy. <laughs> These are a type of honeycomb worm. You can see. You found sun fleas again. Yes. Good lad. What have we got under here? Get ready to grab them. Oh, look! So many winkles and some anemones and I don't know if you can see it there probably not because the camera will be out of focus but that's a kit on I'll try and take a photo of that and I'll put it in here now right I've got a couple of big rocks here might have to put the camera down to flip these there is a little rockling, a little shore rockling. Still lots of winkles, and I don't know if you can see that there. A dog whelk, but that's an enemy there. Has got like electric blue and green lines up the side. to make sure that whenever you turn a rock put it back over Ooh. what have you found some different sizes of hermit crabs it's like a little family there's like a teeny weeny one in there it's pretty so keep an eye out because there is one called a St Pyrrhon's crab mm. it's got like black and white eyes and stalks on it Turn them over. Watch them come out. There's a teeny one in there. Hermit crabs like this are just there. There, it covers a large, a large range of a family of crabs that live inside shells. What they do is they find an empty shell and they live in it until they're too big for it and then they climb out and find a bigger one so they're just like a temporary home, just like a caravan so eventually that one will move into a shell that's that big and that one will move into a shell that's that big into these pools here I can show you a couple of things watch some small patches of mussels but this wire weed is an invasive species and this is a Pacific rock oyster another invasive species now this this is one that's alive it's got a top shell on it if you're walking along the rocks and you see any of these it just looks like a white scar like almost looks like bird muck looks like a seagull's pood that used to be an oyster but someone smashed the top of it so that is the living one of those. When you're walking along areas like this, it makes sense to, uh, to remember the rhyme. Seaweed is slippy, barnacles are grippy. Right, we're going to make our way back along the beach now and walk back towards where the car park is. You know what I was saying about having some bad weather and it's, it's torn some kelp up. You can see how much I mean here. These piles of kelp here are almost as big as James. You going to stand next to it. It is probably three and a half foot deep isn't it? 
<laughs> it's not very nice, is it? Yeah, this is one of those times when you should be glad that there isn't smell vision because it doesn't smell very nice. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's uh, decomposing, isn't it? You could put a body in there and no one would know. <laughs> Don't. What's going on, Mr. Shark? It stinks here! <laughs> what does it smell like? <laughs> flies! Stupid flies! Someone digging a lugworm down there. There we are, we've come to the end of our walk. It didn't exactly go to plan. I had hoped to show you a little bit more of St. Michael's Mount, but we'll just have to save that for another time. We still had a lovely walk on the beach. It is, it is a beautiful little area of beach, isn't it? It could almost be a summer's day, apart from the fact it's about two degrees. You had a good time, didn't you, Mr. Shark? And what do we say? Bye from the All the very best. Take it easy. We'll see you later. Bye.